Start with some about. of your calls for our guests around the table at 931-1125. Let's begin. Hello? Hello, Derek. Yes. Uh, I got a question to ask you. Um, actually, it's two. One of the questions is from the income that the state workers, I mean the state representatives get, how much of that is actually towards state expenses like, um, you know, phone, uh, phone and all their regular um, expenses? Well, state-related. Yeah, I really don't understand the question, uh, and I'm sorry. W would you want to restate it again so I can? All right, next. Hello? Hi, Jerry. Yes. I'm one of those people that you talk about that don't really understand the state budget like, like some of our lawmakers understand. Right. But there's a couple of questions that I had, and one for Nick. If these Medicaid bills have been outstanding for the last six years, why haven't they been paid? Where did the money go that was allotted for those for that those bills at that time? And because they weren't paid, I almost feel as a taxpayer that I'm being asked to pay them again. Well, it's a good question. First of all, uh, as any legislature over the last three or four years, one of the things that we do, and one of the things that we did when we had surpluses, was decide politically what to do with them. And in years past, as I indicated earlier, we had a surplus and the majority decided to fund the pension system, begin to put that on a firm footing, to cut uh, the surtax, which cost us $600 million a year, to increase local aid, which has represented the biggest single increase in the budget. And this year, uh, like 14 or 15 other states, despite all of the cutting that went on, we missed the target, uh, the revenue target, by three, $400 million, and there are also some Medicaid bills that need to be paid. They're being paid by this temporary tax that is going to go out of effect automatically in December of next year. And the budget that began last week is a no new tax budget that we will be living under for the next 12 months and probably beyond. Uh, um, Nick, you said you didn't pay the bills, right? No, the bills are being paid right no. now. Right, but he wanted to know why they weren't paid in the past. You're saying they were sectioned off to various... Uh... No, what, what I'm saying is that the legislature had to decide every single year what to do with the surplus. And the Medicaid problem this year was the problem that came to light and was addressed by the legislature. We could have paid the Medicaid bills all the way back to 1985. Yeah, if I didn't pay but my... instead of that, those yeah. people, people like yourself, the... were advocating yeah. a, cert, a complete repeal of the surtax. Yeah. Now, the, we had a question... How to deal with that in 1986? Should we repeal the surtax and hand the taxpayers back $600 million, or should we take a portion of that and pay the Medicaid? The lion's share of my constituents at that time wanted that money returned to the taxpayers, and that's what we did, Wait and that's what minute. I voted for. Wait a minute. I was involved in that campaign. Nobody ever said at that time, if we repeal the surtax, we won't pay our Medicaid bills, because nobody knew until a couple of months ago that the Medicaid wasn't being paid. So for you to sit Which here is why and the say, Medicaid... we made a choice between Medicaid and the surtax, give us a break. The reason that we were is doing, in fact, the, that's the truth. The is. fact of the matter is that we, we mean, have dealing with the Medicaid you bills knew, now because you, you knew and we knew finally two months ago wait, wait minute, the extent no, of the minute, Medicaid Nick, problem. Wait a minute. Five, four years ago when we did the surtax repeal. Are, are you, you telling you knew me the Medicaid problem that you knew the Medicaid problem? No, 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 no. What I'm you saying is... You just said that, that we all knew it and we chose the surtax. Well, which that's not what I said. Did any more than any more than you just said that the... When you opposed the surtax repeal... Did you, did you do it because you Barbara, knew there was a Medicaid shortfall? Shame is, on you. That is absolutely time, false. When Just when like when Jerry could finish <laughs> saying the fees were the highest in the country when you know they're the they lowest. Are. The, when you know that they're the lowest. Barbara knows they're the lowest. And the they've fees? admitted that off. They, yes. Of course they, they are. Fees and charges are among the lowest. They are the lowest. Among the lowest. They're not the lowest. Jerry, can jump in for a moment? Yeah, I don't know of any state in the United States that charges $5 to walk into the registry and attempts to call it a discount. The fact well, of the matter is, that is the Jerry. kind of phony no, wait, rhetoric no, minute, that no, people no, are upset about. The, the fees are low. The total fees are low With respect to the four hundred, the eight hundred million dollars in uh, wait, this, this in uh, Medicaid, half of it comes from the feds. Is that right? We can solve at least one issue here tonight. If you want to talk about, it is ridiculous. The fact of the matter is, just a moment. All right, Barbara, you want to. The reason the fees overall are low in this state is because we have so many private colleges that our user fees for colleges are lower than the rest of the country. So it looks as if our total total fees 
are very low. But when you're talking about registry fees so and that kind of specific direct fee, so then they get higher. So you're not supposed to count that? Of course you should count it. We're supposed to count all the fees that are high, no, but I'm we're not supposed to count all the fees that are low. I'm just explaining why this is, because one of the reasons is our tuition are lower than the other. The average is that they're very that all the fees across the board are, are low. the second so lowest high. in the country. Our, Which is right. why it's legitimate to raise like tuition, but not necessarily really legitimate to raise But you're saying to ignore I'm that. Not I believe that. No, Barbara you're, Anderson I'm just trying to answer just the question. Ill adjustable. Jim? May I participate in WrestleMania just for one second here by asking a question? Barbara, you're right. We're all sinners. Should have paid the bills earlier. I don't know the history. I wasn't here. I accept your version of the history, even if it isn't accurate. Here today, there's 700 and some million dollars in old, old bills. The legislature passed a temporary tax in an attempt to pay those bills. And you're telling the voters uh, that you and others are going to attempt, with their support, to repeal the $700 million. Let's assume you're... Wait a minute. We did not say what we're going to do. Let me finish the point. That's not true. But when you mention the legislature, the legislature is paying those bills. Uh, that bill to pay the bills was proposed by Richie Vogue and, and supported by Richie well, Vogue. Well, wh whoever supports it, Nick, uh, I don't quarrel with that at all. Okay. Well, I just the only reason I bring that up is because we're always saying that, that he is somebody who is, no question, somebody who is in favor of fiscal responsibility, right. somebody that Barbara Let has praised a number of times, and he has proposed to pay those bills, and he supported it. So I think nobody's that's right. perfect. Right, and so nobody's perfect and fine. So he's suggesting, all of them are suggesting paying those bills. You say, let's take the $700 million back. If you're successful... Wait a minute, don't tell me what I'm saying. We're not saying anything at all yet. If you're successful on November 7th of next year... You don't year, even know what we're going to have on the ballot on November 7th. You're going to attempt to repeal those $700 You have no idea what we're going to do. Is we're still drafting so it. I have no idea what we're going to do. We have uh, three weeks left to, to um, draft it. Yeah, that's system. the first time I heard. What, what did you say about the, uh, the, uh, the, the governor uh, and uh, the, the whole... Uh, there was a, a word you used during this whole debate just a little while ago here? What? Uh, made a mistake? Is that what you said? Made a mistake? No, I didn't say uh, made a mistake. Didn't, the governor has made many mistakes. Didn't the governor this. take, uh, when he was out on the campaign trail, didn't oh, we, has, wait a second, second. I'm not talking here about that particular surtax. Didn't second. he take credit for it? You can't it was him repealed. Him. We repealed it. <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, try, to, try to be overt and honest with us. I'm telling the you, governor Jerry, tried to take credit for it. The point is that the Democratic leadership of the House proposed it, voted for it, initiated it, and are responsible for it. After we got 120,000 signatures. Yeah, but the it. bottom line is that we did that. Good for you. All right, let's, let's continue you. with the calls at 931 1125. Hello. How are you doing, Jerry? Hi, fine. Uh, something I'd like to ask about is the Mass Resource Award Resource yeah. Commission. Uh, the way they act, they act like a uh, <clears throat> like a private industry, not not having anything to do with the uh, state at all. They seem to raise fees, do things, that, uh, give themselves pay raises. Well, the legislature gave the authority to that authority. Uh, Howie Carr refers to it as the Mass Water Rat Hole Authority uh, in this morning's paper, anyway, and they gave them the authority to do what they have to do to use the ta the. Uh, water users and sewer users as fees to fund their operation. Carla, let me just uh, interject there. The, the Mass Water Resources Authority, um, I agree with you, did an outrageous thing recently. In the midst of this budget debate, they increased uh, or proposed an increase in salaries, and I have filed a bill uh, along with Mike Morrissey of Quincy to roll those salaries back. It's the last thing we need to have happen uh, at a time when we're trying to uh, tighten our belt uh, across the board. And I think on that one issue, they should go back further than that. Uh, I think it was a lack of courage by setting up an authority in the first place. And if they're going to clean up Boston Harbor, they should do it with the agency of state government that's meant to do it. And that's accountable to the people. Now, and on not, that score, we agree. And not create an agency that's off budget. That's on not, that score, that's, we agree. And I'd be willing to pay the tax for that as a statewide operation rather than... To, uh, well, get this uh, to come about with fees <laughs> that are so <laughs> regressive. Don't forget, it's incredible. You were Let's take another call. All right, hello. Hi, Jerry. Yes. Um, listen, I'd like to know if the rep, Nick, I don't know his last name. Paleologus. Uh, I can't pronounce it. Paleologus. All right. It's well, easy. I, I would like to know <laughs> if he realizes why the sales tax fees are down or funds or taxes or whatever you want to call it. Does he have any idea why Why revenue down? is down? Why revenue is down? Uh, Nick, we've had sales tax revenue is yep, down, and income, so tax income, income tax is down. down. We've had an economic downturn. We've had a slowdown. I no, mean, I'm going to tell you why. People don't have any money. Uh, my husband brings home $400 a week, all right? We have to pay a mortgage. We have all these other bills to pay. And then our wonderful Duke there doubles everything. You can smile. I can see no, no, I'm not smiling. All it's right, just he that I, I'm, not here to Caller, I'm not here to defend Michael. You, you have to have a vehicle. 
No, you're just a representative of the house. I watched all you guys, all of you, all right? And I listened to Piers, and I'm going to tell you something. I've been a Democrat all my life, but no more. No more. You guys are out. You know, you, you, you go up to that podium, and you give all your rhetoric. $600 million is missing. We got bills that haven't been paid that money was funded for that is missing. Why isn't somebody up in charge of it? Where is our money? All right, now we'll take a short break and respond to that. The fact is this lady really is a mirror of what the public is all about. When they get their bills at the end of the week, it's not simply all the taxes we pay in Massachusetts. It's those water fees and sewer fees and the high fines, 180 bucks for going 55 in a 40-mile zone where some local gendarme is trying to collect some more money for his city or town. It's all of it, Nick. It's high automobile no insurance, question, the Jerry, highest first of all, in the nation. We, we are not it's in all this, of it. We're not in disagreement over what the problem is or even to the extent to which people are upset. I understand that, and the reps understand that better no, than anyone. Don't. Of course we do. I have a, a stack of mail. Do you think it's, uh, you know, it's easy uh, to, or popular to, uh, 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 to, to come out and say, look, we have to pay last year's bills? No, it isn't. Do you think you know, it's we understand popular what popular for somebody who went 55 in a 40 mile zone to have to go into Woburn District Court and, uh, and, and be demeaned? Look, the fact of the matter is, Jerry, that last year's bills have to be paid. This year we're in a no new tax budget. The only point I'm trying to make, and the only point I've tried to make through this entire debate, is that the no new tax budget that we are in, and there will be no new taxes because mm -hmm. the votes are not there for new taxes, has consequences for public schools in particular, and is going to hurt. Well, I, now, that's all I would, I'm saying. Then I would say, in your override and in your position, and there's none of us here, Barbara or myself, or any of the, quote, tax cutters, who want to hurt social services. We do not want to hurt social services. Neither do we. And it's up to you to find other cuts in the budget that can be made that are not vicious and reprehensible. But when we point out to you, as we have on a number of occasions, the way the percentages in the budget work, the number of programs that add up to why this budget increase has gone up, you continually point back to the fact that find the money someplace. It doesn't matter if it's a billion, it doesn't matter if it's a half a billion, find the money someplace. And all we're trying right. to say, and all I'm trying to say is, sure, we're going to cut personnel. We're going to cut What happened to the, the Department payroll. of Energy? What happened to that out of that Senate budget? Look, what MDC, happened to the, to the, Department the of blending Energy, of the MDC? All How about of all of those reforms? All of those reforms taken together will not balance you this budget. You say, make the changes. No, though. and I agree they should be make made. Make the changes. I agree they should be made. We just got another tax on the local made? level, on the oh, county level. They're happening, happening now, Department of Sure, in a moment I'll let uh, Jim Browdy start off the next section. We'll take a, a short break. We'll come back with our uh, Insta poll as well. The Bay State's darkest hour is our subject, and uh, you're to be connected as well here with your comments on the state's uh, financial crisis. Uh, this is Fox 25, 931 1125. Well, back with our guests and your calls at 931-1125. 62.3% uh, of the folks who are calling in tonight want to cut the budget. 28% uh, want to raise taxes. And a combination of both is 9.7%. This is your last opportunity, however, to uh, call the opinion line. And don't forget, it's 95 cents to the 800-900 number, of course. I'll get my figures straight one of these days, and Nick will have me tomorrow on the floor <laughs> of the house. Uh, Jim Browdy. I want to make a comment, then I'm going to go out and make a few phone calls okay, so I can see fine. what I can do with this number, but I'll still speak yep. quickly. Try and bring the third one up. I'll give up on the services thing for a moment because it's clear you don't want to talk about it. Let's talk about taxes and fees and all mm -hmm. those sort of things. The woman who called before that expressed frustration, anger, whatever it is, yep. that average middle class family that's getting buried, she's right. Believe it or not, I think we would all agree. However, there's something other than taxing average low and moderate income families in a submission. We put a proposal on the table. The governor played with it a little bit, which would have raised $265 million, $265 million to fund a whole array of services without costing the average family a dime. Barbara opposed it. The whole business community opposed it. I heard you virtually every mm -hmm. single day on the radio opposing it. Not only would that have raised money, not only would that have raised money that we needed, 
but it would have assured that we wouldn't have to preside over the dismantling of a whole spectrum of services. You're talking about the capital gains. That's exactly right. Let Barbara about. respond to that. Well, Jim, you were supporting that to support the governor's one billion dollar increase in his budget. You still would have needed this income tax increase, which is hitting the average person very hard. Which I assume you you did support, didn't you? I wasn't crazy about the income tax. But you did support it, didn't you? Ultimately, the income tax right. increase. Yes. And you rather will now, it, and on top of that, and on top of that, you will now support the capital gains tax increase and other things that will adversely affect the economy. So, acts you will support almost any tax that comes down the pike here. And the fact is, until we get the taxation under control and tell them they can't have more of our money. They will never do the spending reforms that you're all both saying. I think that's no, what the tax cutters are saying. Doing. Pull well, they won't line, do squeeze it. the state budget, make them accomplish the reforms of the MDC, the Department of Energy, uh, all of the county government could go. We've been debating that for 25 but years. But let's not raise another penny. How about the proposal? Let's get rid of 265 million dollars of these new taxes we all supposedly don't like, and put this other tax in place, this capital gains thing. So that wealthy people can contribute more, wealthy, wealthy people, people who can have a greater ability to pay. Well, I mean, that's Why a typical that liberal conservative Barbara? argument. I think Barbara is giving the conservative argument, and Jim is giving the liberal argument. It's not liberal. Tax the we yes, it is no, a liberal argument. No, no, jury. I said it's, it's a, a notion, liberal it's argument. It's a notion of looking to ability to pay. And if wealthy people right. can I, pay more, I, I have let them pay more. Little or no time people. to get to you another call, all right? 931 1125. Hello? Yes, good evening. Yes. Quickly, please. Yes, I'd like to make a statement regarding what I'm hearing from Mr. Paleologus and Mr. Brody. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, you both, and in particular Mr. Brody, represent a collection of special interest groups and types that at your bequest, Mr. Brody and Mr. Balliologos, you sucker, S-U-C-K-O-R, those who have been having a feeding frenzy at the uh, level of the public trough while suckering, S-U-C-K-E-R-I-N-G, those who do the producing. And that's what's got people damn mad out there. Uh, that idea and that kind of government in this country is coming to an end, and it is now over in Massachusetts. Now, I'm telling you, Mr. Paleologus, people like yourself and others, and I've read this to Mr. Brody, we mean business about this change. We have become powerless over technocratism and uh, patron uh, patronism and, and layers of patronage that we have in this state. And all of our lives have become unmanageable as a result of it. I hear what you say, and I appreciate your I have no idea what the hell you're talking about, except to say, how do you feel about the cuts? They're going to affect your family's lives. I know you're upset about you know, the amount of money you have to. No, Jerry, he I'm, asked a question. I'm, I'm, he made a comment. Right. Can right. I speak to him? Yeah, I have. 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 I to a degree of how we can get better use of our dollars that we're paying for. Taxes. All right, now I have to interrupt here. We're talking about dollars and cents in the state's critical budget situation, and we'll continue with more of your calls in a moment on Fox 25, and we'll, we'll come back as well the results of our special opinion poll. Well, I wish we had more time, but we've run out, and maybe on some other occasion we'll do it. 63% of our viewers who called in and wanted to cut the budget, 28% wanted to raise taxes, 9% wanted to cut and raise. My thanks to Nick Paleologos, Barbara Anderson, uh, Bob Turner, and Jim Browdy. Next week, we'll have Dr. Gilbert Holloway. We'll be doing some extrasensory perception. Maybe you can find us some taxes or some more revenue or revenue enhancement. I'll see you tomorrow, 2 to 6 on WRKO Radio, and next Monday live here on Fox 25. Good night and good luck.